Step 4. Stack the deck. I was 21 when I started following famous entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk. I had just graduated from college, and I was in that self-discovery period, trying really hard to find direction. My lifelong dream was to own the Cleveland Indians, but I had no idea how I was going to get there. Around that time, I saw some dude announce at a conference that he intended to own the New York Jets. I snapped to attention. This guy is 10 years older than me, and 10 years closer to the same goal I have, I thought. I'm going to just watch what he does. Maybe he can shed some light on the path. I've watched Gary closely ever since, and he was one of the first guests I booked at the very first capitalism conference. I wanted to discover what his plan was to own a major sports franchise. What I discovered is that his entire focus is on building the engine that allows him to create and acquire brands that can be worth billions of dollars. When it comes to stacking the deck in your favor, there's no one better than Gary. He spent years delivering content and building an audience that follows and trusts him. That content gives him leverage, exposure, and, most importantly, relationships. Put simply, he has resources at his fingertips he can tap into to help build or scale any brand he touches. What fascinates me most about Gary's strategy is that he can use his audience to launch brands. In fact, he's used that leverage to launch a speaking bureau, a sports agency, and several consulting agencies. When he launched his winery, Empathy Wines, I was among the first in line to place a big order. I also flew to New York City to interview Gary about the launch, where he reframed the strategy for me. I have no expectation of converting any of the audience that I already have into customers of any product that I sell, he said. Think about it, I give away most content for free. The amount of sales I've made in return doesn't even come close to balancing the amount of content I give away. I put out content for the sake of putting out content. I'm comfortable asking my audience to consider my product if they're already in the market for sneakers or wine, but I have no expectation of conversion. That's not why I'm putting out content. In fact, the hucksters I make fun of, who are selling tons of products to their audience from moment one, they're actually killing me in the short term. Their sales crush mine. I'm not in this for the short term. I want my audience to show up at my fucking funeral. And I mean that. I don't need my audience's money. I'm going to sell way more bottles of empathy wine to people who have never heard of me. But building Vayner Media is the way I'm setting up the play for empathy, and for the brands I buy in the future. I realized that Gary was playing this very differently from everyone else out there. Do you want to be happy? Give without the expectation of receiving, he said. Do you want to be really unhappy? Give only for the expectation of people giving you something in return. Humans don't act that way. That won't happen. It's true that Gary expects little of his audience, after all, his following isn't just a following of wine lovers, but that audience still has the power to command tens of thousands of wine bottle sales. Furthermore, the relationships he's built have opened up the door for that brand. In a podcast interview with me, Empathy Wines CEO Jonathan Troutman told me that its strategy wasn't to depend on Gary's audience, but that it certainly lit the first spark, instead of starting at dead zero. The wine, of course, still has to be good, and the brand needs to stand on its own, but his audience serves as the initial spark to get the product moving off the shelves. In the same way that Tim Ferriss can put a brand on the map by talking about it on his podcast, Gary can do it with his own audience, even if the product isn't perfectly tailored to his entire audience. That's the power of having even a little bit of attention. Alcohol brands have sold for billions of dollars, George Clooney's tequila brand, Casamigos, was sold for a cool billion dollars just four years post-e-launch, so that, Spark, could become the flame that buys Gary the New York Jets. Similar to Gary, I post all my best content for free on my podcast. You can hear my conversations with him, as well as the interview with the CEO of Empathy Wines, at capitalism.com, best. You don't have to build an audience the size of Gary's to completely alter the course of your business. If you do just a fraction of what we outline next, you'll set yourself up to quickly put your company on the map, sprint toward 25 sales per day, and eventually 100 sales per day, and clear the million before your first year is done. Welcome to the grind if we wanted to make earning money really simple, we could boil it down to two steps, pick something to sell and sell it. Most people never make it through the first step of deciding what to sell. Instead, they sell their time in the form of a 9 to 5 job. Deciding what your business is going to sell, who your customers are going to be, 
and getting your product made is no small task. That's why most people never even make it to this point. When you make these decisions, you are nearly halfway home. However, as the old adage goes, nothing really happens until something is sold. Everything up to this point is simply getting into the game. You have a product to sell. Now, it's time to play the game. Right now, you don't know how to play the game, so the first few months of the game are a grind. During this time, you will likely obsess over every detail, and you will overthink every decision. When the chaos starts to get to you, take peace in the fact that your goal is incredibly simple. Your only job during this period is to take a sale. That's it. You will feel tempted to make it complicated, to follow a slew of different people's advice, or to create complex sales systems. You will want to get distracted by reading marketing blogs and chasing every opportunity that falls into your lap. But you have just that one job take a sale. Whenever I feel stressed, I remind myself that my job in business is to take a sale. If I'm having a bad day, I'll often make a list of prospective customers, or put something on social media that talks about one of my products. Then, I call those customers personally, email them, or send them a message. My goal is to take one sale. It's hard to express how much that can turn my day around. Sometimes, you have to think very small in order to focus, but doing that creates momentum that very quickly builds. Right now, your focus is 100% on taking sales, and you will have to resist big thinking to do the work necessary to take those orders. Thankfully, I have coached hundreds of entrepreneurs through this process, and believe me, it used to be much harder. It used to be that entrepreneurs would spend three to four months just getting their finished products in front of enough people to take a sale. Today we know better. Today we know that we can complete the grind in 30 days or less. We do that by stacking the deck. How to guarantee sales from day one? You don't need to be a social media celebrity or even have a following to guarantee sales of your product on the first day. You just need enough eyeballs to put the cards in your favor. That's what led me to utter these three words I love yoga. By no means am I the first person, or even the millionth person, in recent history to say those three words on social media. The impact they had on my business, though, was incalculable. Those three words were essentially enough to get me in front of as many people as I needed to launch a successful and profitable brand. Back in 2013, I was working with many new entrepreneurs who were excited about the opportunity to start a business. However, they sometimes got frustrated when it came time to take sales for their product. They did a ton of research to find their first product. They did the hard work of getting samples and working with suppliers. Then, they set up their Amazon store in. Dot. Dot. Crickets. I call that the hump. It's when you do a lot of work to get your product ready for sale, and then you hit a barrier to the next steps. And it's why the first few months in business are called the grind. If new business owners don't get sales right away, they often get discouraged, anxious, and worried. Sometimes, they think about quitting before they even have a chance to get started. But if they make it over this hump, they sail toward success. Fast sales out of the gate, on the other hand, gives them the momentum to keep going and keep growing. That's why so many of my students are so profitable and successful. In the grind, we work almost exclusively on getting sales as fast as possible. While I was coaching some of them through the process, I heard one of my peers utter, Man, I'm so jealous of established companies who already have customer lists. They can just market their product to people who have already bought in the past. I mean, look at Apple, they have people waiting in line to get the next product. Wouldn't it be nice if you could launch a product to a group of people ready to buy your product the day you had it ready? Until that point, I'd been teaching sales and marketing strategies to help my group of new entrepreneurs get through the hump. Those strategies worked, but they took time and effort to really kick in. When I heard my friend utter those words, I wondered, is there a way for me to stack the deck so that sales come rushing in on the very first day? Maybe we didn't have the customer list or the budget that big companies have, but still, I wondered if I could get people lining up, ready to buy the product the day it was ready. At the time, Sean and I were launching our yoga business, and I was documenting the whole thing for my students. I called him one Saturday morning and asked for an update on the state of yoga mats we had ordered. They are on a boat, on their way from the supplier that we chose on Alibaba, he said. They won't be at Amazon for like eight weeks. He was frustrated. We had done all this work, and now we had to wait eight weeks for the product to get here? However, I saw that as an opportunity. I told Sean, okay, 
Buddy, that means we have eight weeks to stack the deck in our favor. Our job now is to do everything we can to ensure that we have people ready to buy the very first day that our yoga mats are ready for sale. How the heck do we do that? Sean asked. We started talking about our options. Should we blog about yoga and build traffic to our website? What if we made videos and launched the product on YouTube? We could build an email list, or we could partner with a big yoga community. All those ideas sounded great, but they would take longer than eight weeks to kick in. Instead, we looked for the quickest, simplest, and fastest way to get people to line up ready to buy our yoga mats. At the time, Facebook had just released business pages, and it was getting a lot of free traffic. We created a small Facebook page around the topic of yoga, and we called it I Love Yoga. Straightforward enough, right? The audience data collected was broad, but that didn't matter. I knew that anyone who liked that page was into yoga, and anyone who was into yoga would buy yoga mats. I'd already identified the products people who are into yoga buy as well. All I needed from there was enough of an audience to be able to talk up the yoga products I was planning to sell. We started sharing content on the page to get our followers to like and share that content. We spent $10 per day on advertising to build the following. And we engaged with our followers in the comments. After about 30 days, we had around 3,000 people who liked our page. But we did one more thing that was the most important piece of it all. We documented our product release on the I Love Yoga Facebook page. We didn't brag about the product or try to sell it, we simply talked about our product by showing the prototype process, explaining the difference in our product, and sharing every change we made to it based on feedback from people like them. We showed them that we'd added a thicker strap to our yoga mat simply because that was what they said they wanted. We showed them that we listened to them, that we wanted to hear what they had to say, and that we wanted to serve their needs. As we were building that Facebook page, Sean and I knew that as soon as we were ready to launch we'd have an audience who was ready to buy. Or, for all you poker players out there, we had stacked the deck in our favor. Getting over the hump the goal is to get enough eyeballs in one place to get a spark lit. It's a bit like using a magnifying glass to start a fire. Can you point just enough power at your target to get it to ignite? Using Facebook to build up a hungry audience will work for as long as Facebook continues to exist, but the tactics you use may change with the times. And since the internet is always evolving, new opportunities are always opening up. However, the principles are timeless. Your job is to stack the deck so that you have people waiting to buy your product the day it comes out. You will do this by running advertising to a central place where you can contact your audience, engage that audience with content that appeals to them, and document the launch of your product, so that they're primed and ready to buy when it's ready. Getting to this point is hard work. Deciding who your audience is, developing your product, figuring out how to bring your product to market, and placing your order for inventory. Add to that the fact that you've spent anywhere between $500 and $5,000 on that inventory. Then suddenly you hit, the hump. The time between ordering your inventory and it being ready for sale, which can range anywhere from two weeks to three months, can feel like the longest wait of your life. Sure, it will be exciting to hear that your product is manufactured, shipped, put on a boat by a freight forwarder, and heading across the ocean, but the anticipation is like waiting for your first baby to arrive, ask me how I know. If you start on Kickstarter, you can pre-sell a lot of product, gaining faster sales momentum. If you're selling on Amazon, you can't go live with sales until there's actually inventory at the warehouse. Either way, stacking the deck with ready-to-buy customers will strike a match that brings a roaring fire to life. Not only does that give you the momentum and the energy to keep growing but it also helps you rank for keywords on both Kickstarter and Amazon. The buzz you generate also gets people talking about you on social media and sharing the product with their friends. It makes getting reviews easier, too. In other words, it would be a big mistake to avoid stacking the deck. I have seen many would-be entrepreneurs with good ideas simply give up because they didn't get momentum fast enough. Following these steps could have saved them. I want to point out that I might be an expert at this now, but I was really just guessing through the beginning of all this. Yes, I have a background in digital marketing that helped me to navigate this unknown terrain, but I was still guessing at the strategy. I was able to beat all my competitors because most people are doing nearly nothing to stack the deck. They're so focused on the moment their product goes live that they're not even considering how to boost that moment ahead of time. So, even if you only do this process with 20% competence, 
you're still going to be miles ahead of the game. Your only goal at the end of the eight weeks, on launch day, is to have enough of a following to be able to move the first few hundred units of your product. That way, you can get that snowball rolling and get to 25 sales a day. There are a ton of options for you to find that following to do this online. Facebook groups are free and easy to build, as are LinkedIn groups, and they each can have very high engagement. Some people use Instagram pages or other social media accounts, which work well as long as you can stand out. Some people just use their own personal Facebook pages, which can also do the trick. The important thing is attracting a few hundred people who are responsive and passionate, like you are conversing with a community. That community will follow your product journey and support you when it comes time to launch. That will be the spark that takes you to 25 sales per day and beyond. How much an audience do I need? Theoretically, 100 people in the same room, ready to buy on launch day, would be enough to start the fire. The size of the audience matters less than the responsiveness of your community. Buying cheap traffic to a Facebook page won't give you as much momentum as dedicated email subscribers or a close community of Instagram followers. The goal is not to have a lot of passive followers, your goal is to have people lining up at the doors on launch day, ready to buy. Yes, you can include your friends in this list. You can include your coworkers, and you can include the pizza delivery guy who needs your product. Heck, I know some people who launch their products with a private email or text thread with just a few dozen people. It wasn't ideal, but it worked. Remember, your goal is to get just enough people ready to buy on launch day that you kickstart the momentum. I have found this formula to be helpful during this process. 1,000 followers plus 10 personal contacts plus one influencer equals 100 sales in other words. If you can get your brand in front of 1,000 people on your own using ads or content creation, then you have enough of a public following to smash launch day. On top of that, if you ask 10 personal friends to join the launch, and you secure one micro-influencer, you will have the numbers you need. When Sean and I had more than 1,000 followers on our Facebook page, we knew that we had enough of a fan base to begin the launch process. On top of that, we called our list of personal friends who did yoga. We knew that if one of our friends was into yoga, then he or she knew other people who also were. We told them what we were up to, gave them a free yoga mat, and asked if they would be willing to post about it on social media on launch day. If you want to really knock it out of the park, add one micro-influencer to the mix to stoke the fire. In our case, that meant forming a partnership with one similar yoga page with at least 10,000 followers. That was 1,000 followers on our page, 10 personal friends, and one micro-influencer. We knew that would be enough to get 100 sales on launch day. And if we were wrong, well, it was better than nothing. You don't have to have everything perfect, but the more eyeballs, the better. If you only have 500 followers, or no following at all, but you still have personal friends and an influencer, launch. Go as hard as you can with the resources that you have. Remember, most people get stuck here. They put their product up for sale and then they wait. They expect the internet gods to rain favor upon them in the form of sales. Do not follow their lead. Use whatever you have, whether that be a YouTube channel, a friend with a blog, or your own personal Facebook page, to start the fire. My student Sophie, who I've mentioned before, followed this process with amazing success, even though she didn't have a big following or a lot of connections. When she ran her successful Kickstarter campaign, she documented the process on her personal Facebook page. She had no ad budget, her entire marketing plan just consisted of lining up a few hundred people, a few personal contacts, and a Facebook group, and she's been stoking the fire ever since. She recently emailed me to tell me that she had made $1 million in a month selling her reusable lunchboxes and other products. That's one hell of a fire. How should I build my audience? Social media whims can change from minute to minute. One second, a new Facebook feature is hot, the next, it's Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, or whatever the cool new thing is, and it seems like you have to be 22 or younger to stay ahead. All of them are centered on what gets attention and what gets engagement. For the purposes of promoting your product on launch day, you can ignore the latest social media buzz. You don't need to become an expert on any specific platform. You just need to choose a way to get in front of your ideal person, in a way that gets their attention and encourages them to follow your journey. Your best bet is to discover where your audience already lives and combine it with how you are comfortable communicating with them. 
One of my students, for example, has an organization company. His audience is mostly women who are obsessed with perfectly organized closets, drawers, and the like. His audience already hangs out on Pinterest, so he puts his attention there. I, on the other hand, have never used Pinterest and would have a really hard time building an audience there. Since I like to talk about business, and it's natural for me to talk into a microphone, podcasting is my preferred method for building an audience. I can't get feedback from a podcast, so I send my audience to an email list so that I can communicate with my followers. The process in this book will work with any platform as long as you share content, run ads, and actively engage with your community. If you're building up a brand you're personally excited about, then creating content on a blog, a podcast, or a video channel is your best bet. It'll enable you to attract long term followers. If you're not a subject matter expert when it comes to your market, then you'll want to run ads and bring people to a central location, a Facebook group, Instagram account, or an email list, because you need those 1,000 followers to be within your control. Some people consider hiring out content creation or hiring a marketing agency at this stage in the process, but that's going too deep, too soon. Remember, you only need 100 people or so who buy at first launch to start building the snowball. What the heck do you put in front of your audience to get them excited to follow you? And, more importantly, excited to buy on launch day? All you need to do is document the building of your business. That's it. Post pictures of your prototype. Share videos of how nervous you are. Post a picture of one of your friends holding the finished product. Write posts about why you decided to serve this market. On top of that, entering the conversation your community is having goes a long way. For example, if a new golfer hits the scene and you are selling golf gear, do a blog post, video, or podcast about the new golfer's chances. Is he the next Tiger Woods? Or is the hype overblown? If your community is buzzing about something, give your take on it. This will engage your audience and attract new ones, and it breaks up the content that's exclusively about your product launch. You might also simply answer commonly asked questions among your audience. Make a list of 5 to 10 questions that your person asks when they start their journey, and then create a piece of content around them. The blend of product pieces, engagement with your community, and commonly asked questions will get your tiny audience to rally around you. Shortcut. If you can get your message in front of 10,000 people or more, then you can jump directly to communicating with them about your new product line. If you, or one of your partners already have an audience, it can be the hack to shortcut this process. Partnering with influencers and making them an official part of the brand is my favorite shortcut to put a brand on the map. If you have an advertising budget, spend some of it on sponsoring a related podcast or YouTube channel that already has the audience. One of my students, Colin, runs a company called Wild Foods, at Wild Foods Co. on Instagram. He does a great job of mixing product, commentary, and questions into his public following. He started at zero and went through this exact process, and he's now crossed seven figures, with his brand carried by retail chains all over the country. Ultimately, a brand is really just trust, and you're earning people's trust at this stage in the process. When people start to engage, they will bring their friends with them. People trust the personal opinions of their friends. That's why word of mouth advertising is so incredibly valuable to a business. You can stack the deck with that trust early by putting out your own personal opinions to groups of people already looking to you to solve their problems. During this process, you may also start to get the attention of other influencers. That is a very, very good thing. One caveat, though, nobody likes a cold call, even when there's no money involved. Approaching an influencer and asking them to feature or share your content isn't going to build a relationship, it's only going to make that person feel like a transaction. The trick is not to ask, as in, hey, can I be on your show? The trick is to give, here's a piece of content I made that I think your audience would love. Is there anything that your audience is struggling with that I could write about or speak to, in order to serve them? If you do that, you'll find that influencers will happily invite you onto their platforms to better serve their audiences. If you're a guest on someone's podcast and your content is helpful, you make that podcaster look good and you earn more followers, it's a win win. It will be slow and frustrating at first, but you have to do it. Answer every comment and respond to each message. Just like a new diet or other life change, it will be hard to see the progress at first, but over a few weeks, you will gain the momentum that you need to hit pay dirt.
Prepping for go time everything in the lead up to day one is designed to prep your audience to buy from you on launch day. For Sean and me, that meant that the closer we got to day one, the more promotional we got. Our messaging wasn't over the top or pushy, but it was direct. We're really excited about this product line. But we have some bad news, we were only able to order 500 of these for the first round. If you want one, leave a comment below and we'll put you on our special launch list so that you're first in line, ahead of everybody else, when they go live on April 30th. We weren't shy about selling the product or sharing the inventory constraints, and people responded. It worked. We took 50 sales out of the gate and 50 more sales shortly after that. Those people left reviews and told their friends, and we were soon doing 50 sales per day on that first product, which was the equivalent of a six-figure business. We knew we had a winner. Don't miss the opportunity to line up those hot leads so they're ready to buy on launch day. You might think that your business is too small or your niche is too specific for a launch strategy to be applicable to you. Two of my students, Jenna and Travis Ziegler, are eye doctors. They started out selling sunglasses, but they wanted to release more products that reflected their expertise. They had a list of products they wanted to launch, but there didn't seem to be enough volume to support the purchase of more inventory. One of these products was a spray for dry eyes. There's just not a lot of volume out there for people looking for a spray to relieve dry eyes. They told me they were going to put up a Facebook group for people with dry eye syndrome. Even I thought that the following, which was only a few hundred people, would be too small to launch multiple products. Guys, I told them, that's a really small market. Maybe you should go a bit broader, and just offer general advice for eye health. Against my advice, they started a Facebook group where they answered frequently asked questions about dry eyes. At the end of each week, they did a Facebook live with their community. All these dry eye sufferers started inviting their friends who they knew suffered from dry eyes as well tagging one another and asking more questions. The doctors only built up a community of a few hundred people, but they were incredibly responsive and quick to engage, and the community loved it. I was wrong. When they finally launched their dry eye spray product, it blew up. The community rallied to support it, buy it, and review it. That product had extremely high profit margins, and they didn't have to pay for advertising as the community helped spread the word. That one product completely changed their business. They were able to launch other products to that same audience, tripling and eventually quadrupling their revenue. They now had the ability to test different ideas quickly, without having to worry about competition, price wars, or people who had thousands of more reviews than they did. They could predictably roll out products, and they built a multi-million dollar business. Your hot list One of the things that helps guarantee your success is developing a hot list of buyers who raise their hands and commit to buying your product on launch day. The process for doing this is stupidly simple. Here's how it works. As you publicly talk about your product, you will inevitably have certain people who get more excited than others. I like to reward them by putting them first in line. The more people who are first in line to buy my product, the better chances of my product success. For example, as I get closer to launch day, I start to get more promotional. I might post something like, as you know, our yoga mats go on sale April 2nd. And this early in the process, it's really important that we get feedback from people who have been following us. Sadly, we only have a few hundred of them available, so I am holding a handful of them for followers who are raring and ready to go. If you want me to reserve one for you for the first 24 hours on launch day, comment. I want one, and I will add you to our hot list. When you start saying that there is a limited supply of a product, you start to build up a mini buying frenzy. People will sign up for your hot list even if they were on the fence before. This buying frenzy creates momentum and allows you to sell your product even harder. For example, I might follow up with a post like, wow. Over 50 people commented on my last post and said that they wanted one of our yoga mats. I'm so honored, thank you. I will be holding a total of 100 yoga mats to ensure that first responders get their mat the day that it's available. Sadly, that means that even fewer will be available to the general public, so if you want on the first inline list, please comment, first in line, and I will add you to the hot list. I like to bring my hot list into a separate communication channel, usually an email list, Slack channel, or private Facebook group, so that they feel like an insider. I remind them that they are getting advanced notice of the product going live. And when the product is ready on launch day, that small group of people will rush the doors to buy my product. 
How to stack the deck again? Your one goal during this stage of the process is to build a big enough audience to earn your brand at least 100 customers when you launch. Here's how you get those first 100 customers. 1. Identify where your target market already hangs out. Sometimes they're already following certain Instagram pages, they're in specific Facebook groups, or they watch particular YouTube channels. 2. Create a series of content directly targeted to that person. You can also start building relationships with the people who run those groups you found in the first step. 3. Document the process of your product. What's different about it? Why did you make certain decisions? How far are you from launch? 4. Start announcing when the product is going to be available. Build up your following, your network, and your content by responding to every comment, replying to every message, and sharing your opinion on topics within the community, and then let your followers know when they'll be able to buy your product. 5. Reach out to your own personal contacts and start lining up that one influencer. Many people discount the power of their own personal network. If you're passionate about or involved in the market to which you're speaking, then you absolutely know 10 people who are customers in that market. If you're launching a CrossFit brand, then you know 10 people who also do CrossFit and are posting about it on Facebook. It doesn't matter if these people aren't at the level of influencer. If you're only trying to get 100 people to buy in the first part of your launch, then you only need these 10 people to influence 10 other people. Today, the average person has a few hundred Instagram followers and at least 100 Facebook friends. Line up 10 of them, and you're in front of thousands of people. That's more than enough to do damage. 6. Finally, build your hot list. Start moving people to the front of the line so they can be one of the first people to try your product. Real World Stacked Dex Roxel Cho is one of my favorite students. She started Fused Hawaii, a handmade swimwear brand that empowers women to live comfortably in the skin they're in. Not long ago, Roxel was making products in her garage, but then she gained the loyalty and support of a growing customer base through Facebook Live, Instagram, and emails. She didn't consider herself a marketer, she just showed up for her audience, which caused Fused Hawaii to scale incredibly fast. She quickly passed $120,000 in sales per month with only social media. I sell swimwear, but I don't consider Fused Hawaii a swimwear company, she told me. When I started out, I was making handbags, screen printed shirts, hats, anything I could make out of my garage. I named the company Fused because I was fusing together all my artistic instincts. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew the business was something that was going to continue to shift through the years. Growing our audience's brand allows me to experience these incredibly cool moments with our customers as we grow. When something great happens, our first instinct is to share it. That's what all of this is about, growing alongside people. Roxell's swimwear mission was to differentiate from all the other brands out there selling confidence, both real and false. As women, even when you feel good in your own skin, you're always going to reach a moment where you have a lack of confidence, she said. So for the ideal fused Hawaii woman, it's not just about feeling confidence or saying we're confident. It's more about taking the leap when you don't know the results or the outcome. It's about going in the direction of your beliefs and intention. As I've gotten really clear on my messaging, it's become clearer that it's not just about confidence. We're speaking to the girl who is going to take a risk and jump toward her dreams even when it's scary, not knowing where she's going to land, but knowing she'll be strong enough to stand when she does. That message has vaulted Roxell above other brands speaking to women. In Hawaii, land of swimwear, we're in our swimwear all the time, she said. It's the most vulnerable piece of clothing there is. In Hawaii, we're out in public in our swimwear, in lingerie, basically. To feel confident in your skin in that state is the win for me, and what I want to bring to my audience with our messaging. Roxell's swimwear success came at the same time as her message. The two threads are intertwined. I knew it was the product along with the story that really sold the brand. I was hearing from women who told me that for the first time, they felt comfortable out on the beach with their kids, or going to a party in a swimsuit. I'm not a designer. I was just making swimwear for myself, and slapping my logo on it. But it was the story, alongside the products made for real women, which built our audience. Today, Roxell can sell whatever she wants at whatever quantity she desires. Her customers buy months in advance, and she literally cannot keep up with the demand. That's a nice problem to have. When you have an audience, you can take more strategic risks, too.
The flexible dieting lifestyle is a company I advise that sells healthy versions of favorite cheat meals. One of the co founders, Zach Rochillo, built his audience by posting recipes on Instagram, and it was all he needed to launch physical products. We had built a brand around solving a problem everyone has, turning cheat meals into everyday meals, Zach told me. One of our biggest hits was a recipe for protein cookie butter. It had great nutritional value, tasted great, and met our audience's cravings. But one thing they kept telling us was that, basically, they didn't want to make it themselves. They wanted to be able to just buy it. It was new territory for Zach as he'd never done a physical product before. We decided to just figure it out, he said. We developed the product, came up with 10,000 units, and launched it with zero ad spend. All we did was show the product to our audience, put in front of their eyes this thing they'd been asking for, and tell them, hey, here it is, swipe up to purchase. And they did. We went through 10,000 units in a single week. Zach focused on storytelling and building an audience with an emotional connection to his company. That emotional connection is the key point. You want customers who aren't price shopping but who buy your product because they feel connected to you. When should I hit the go button? As your inventory inches its way across the ocean and gets closer to its arrival at the Amazon warehouse, you'll be able to more accurately pinpoint day one, launch day. A word of advice give yourself a time buffer. If you think your product is going to be available on Friday, schedule your launch for the following Wednesday. Hyping up a launch date only to be unable to take sales on that day is a huge waste of customer attention and engagement. You may want to consider creating some sort of incentive for people to buy within the first few days. This could be a bonus or some sort of discount, like a BOGO deal. In general, I don't like pricing discounts, it can be incredibly difficult to pivot out of being seen as a discount brand. But it's okay in a launch period with the understanding that you'll probably never discount the price of the product again, except in special situations. Just make sure to include a firm deadline on the discount and stick to it. Be protective of your inventory, especially when you're doing extras. My preference is to have a bonus or add on to make your product an irresistibly sexy buy in its first few days. Sometimes, honest scarcity is the best incentive to buy. If you only have 500 units available, and you have 500 people on your launch list, not to mention the 1,000 people who follow you on Instagram, and all their friends who might see and share your content, too, then there will be people who aren't going to get to make a purchase. This kind of scarcity only drives more interest. In the customer's mind, scarcity equals value. During the final seven days before your launch, you should talk about the launch every day, emailing your list, posting about it on social media. Leveraging any influencer relationships you've built. Burn it into everyone's brain. This product goes live at 11 a.m. next Wednesday. The minute 11 a.m. hits, watch the floodgates open. Be sure to temper your expectations for those first few days. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of launch and the engagement your audience is showing you, and then be disappointed when you don't immediately sell out, which, again, you do not want to do. Dot. As long as you get at least 25 to 100 sales in the first few days, and if you do what I outline in this book, it's very rare that that won't happen, you'll have enough momentum to start to scale the business further. Remember the formula to get to $1 million, 3 to 5 products, at an average price point of $30, each getting 25 sales per day, equals a million dollar business. Once you reach 25 sales, your job becomes following up with those customers to get reviews. We'll talk about that in a later chapter, as I don't want to teach you to sprint before you start to walk. Your only job right now is to take a sale, and the best way to do that is by stacking the deck. Entrepreneur Spotlight Marvin Lee Marvin Lee was a registered nurse with a very high paying job from which he was almost fired. Management was moving everyone around, and Marvin soon realized his job was in jeopardy. He'd also lost his passion for the work. He got into nursing to help people, and those parts of the job were amazing, but there were so many standards and policies and people telling him what he should be doing that those parts of the job he loved were getting lost. Marvin had always wanted financial freedom, too. He'd had a bit of a rough upbringing, which had motivated him to make something of himself. So he'd been saving his money, but he didn't really know what to do with it. He talked to some friends who were doing well with online businesses, and he wondered if it was possible for him also. During his research, he stumbled across my videos. When he discovered that it was indeed possible for him, he partnered up with his best friend to get started. 
They began looking for a product that would be profitable and that they had the budget to compete with, they didn't have a lot of money they were willing to invest. They discovered a unique fitness tool they could adjust for the yoga niche. Shockingly, there were zero competitors with a similar product in the yoga space. It was perfect. A friend of Marvin's was in touch with manufacturers in China, and he got them amazing deals with a manufacturer. Having done his research, Marvin worked with the factory to make modifications based on reviews. The end result was the same basic product being sold as a general recovery tool but tailored to the yoga audience, and improved over all the other versions. It was a huge hit. People absolutely loved it. However, Marvin knew I recommend having three to five products to create a brand. While Marvin had a popular product on his hands, he didn't have a brand. And he found creating one really, really tough. He didn't know how to define, brand, or put a neat box around it. People would tell him, brand, was his logo or how a customer felt when they saw the product, but what did that mean in terms of actionable steps? He read books on marketing that were full of random stuff he couldn't apply to his business. He knew that for branding, different was better. But what did it even mean to be different? Should they have a different color? A higher price? They struggled to figure out how to be different, and how to tie that into a brand theme that would serve the customer. It was hard to create an aligned brand when they'd never targeted a specific person. They just focused on creating a better product, but hadn't considered who they were serving. Then he heard me in one of my videos hammering home the importance of audience and messaging. Why don't I just talk to my audience directly? He thought. Marvin didn't post much on Instagram, or even have a large following, but he started taking the time to send direct messages to customers, asking them what they thought of the product. That was a total game changer, Marvin told me. Having real conversations with people who loved the product made us understand who they were, and what products they might want next. Even though it was only a few hundred people, Marvin's audience responded loudly. He and his partner used the feedback they received to adjust their marketing, which resulted in more sales. They moved from just having a product to thinking about the person who would benefit from it and what he or she would use that product for. They always made sure that they were serving a person. By the time competitors found their market and tried to copy them, Marvin and his partner were too far ahead. At that point, customers kept choosing them, thanks to all the reviews from real people. Marvin has had a ton of success with just two products, but he plans to add at least three more. Then he'll be in a position to possibly sell the brand. If I could give one piece of advice to someone looking to start a products business, it's to make sure you know what you're doing first, Marvin said. A lot of people say to take action, but don't rush. You'll make mistakes. Expensive ones. Marvin and his partner didn't just test everything to see what worked. They thought things out. They considered all scenarios. You also have to love learning, he told me. If you don't continue learning, someone is going to outlearn you and become more successful. And in this game, learning means listening to your customers. In business, there will always be people who want to copy you, which means each business is a dying business. If you're not forever evolving, you have a time limit. I remember back when we started the brand and launched a product run right around Christmas, everyone told us that for the holiday period, we should order three to five times as much product as we thought we'd sell. We didn't have the cash for that, he said. The two friends sat down and had a serious conversation. How willing are you to go through with this? They asked each other. They were both determined to push through and decided to put $80,000 on a credit card with an 18% interest rate. They knew that if this didn't go right, they'd go bankrupt. That's when I found out how strong I was and how bad I wanted it, Marvin told me. It turned out to be the best thing I've ever done. I finally feel like I've accomplished something all on my own. To me, that's priceless.